Pregnancy is an exciting time. You're getting ready for the new baby, you start feeling the baby's kicks, you can hear the baby's heart. But does it have to come with all these new symptoms? Your body's changing fast and along the way you can experience new pain, skin condition and other problems that you have never felt before. Here are 9 symptoms to pay attention to. Let your OBGYN know if peeing is painful. It could be a simple UTI that can be treated over-the-counter drugs, but it may still require your doctor's attention. The pain may indicate infection, and if it's not treated, it could spread to your kidneys. This is called pyelonephritis, and it could lead to kidney failure. And in the worst case scenario, even spread through your blood, causing sepsis, that's a life-threatening situation. So during pregnancy, your body's more vulnerable and prone to infection. So even something seemingly like UTI can always be more dangerous. This explains why during pregnancy, your doctor always runs a urine analysis with each prenatal visit and urine culture at your initial appointment. So I had a patient once, Lisa, she was 20 weeks into her first pregnancy and she was referred to me by a colleague to check her baby's heart with an ultrasound. She told me she had been having fever every day late in the afternoon and that the past few days the fever had continued despite the fever medication she was taking. I asked her about respiratory or flu symptoms, it was flu season, but nothing. I asked her about pain or burning sensation with she peed, she said no. So I started to examine her before the ultrasound and when, when I got to the kidney percussion, the part of the exam, this involves like soft punches in both sides of your lower back. If it doesn't hurt, everything is fine. But if there's even the most minimal feeling of pain or tenderness, this indicates pyelonephritis. In Lisa's case, when I barely touched her lower back, she jumped from the examining table. Obviously, the lab results confirmed pyelonephritis. So after asking Lisa a few questions about her habits, she told me that she drank very little water and urinated very small amounts every time she went to the bathroom. So she no longer felt any pain or discomfort, so nothing drew her attention. She told me that she had felt some pain and discomfort a few weeks ago, but then the feeling went away. Well, obviously, the infection did not go away. It went higher up to her kidneys. Eventually, everything worked out well for Lisa and her baby. She had to be admitted, received intravenous antibiotics, and in a week, she was back home. So let's get back to the nine symptoms you can't ignore during your pregnancy. So we talked about fever. If you have a temperature over 100.4 or higher, call your doctor, set an appointment because you'll probably have to run some tests. A number this high could indicate infection. The reason behind sharp pains in your abdomen area can vary from trimester to trimester. This could simply be growing pain as your pelvis ligaments stretch and your uterus grows to accommodate your baby. You may feel increased pressure on your hips, which is normal. Depending on the trimester, you could experience practice contraction called Braxton Hitz contraction, but this symptom could also indicate preterm -la labor, usually due to an ectopic pregnancy, especially in the first trimester. This happens when the baby's growing inside one of your fallopian tubes instead of your uterus. Placental abruption, especially when it comes along with bleeding. This happens when the placenta starts separating from the wall of the uterus before birth. Multiple pregnancies, substance abuse, infections, chronic conditions such as diabetes and high blood pressure in a short time between pregnancy. If the pain persists, make an appointment to see your doctor. However, if the pain is so great that you're curled up in the corner of the bathroom or it comes along with bleeding, this is an emergency. Head straight to the ER. Nausea and vomiting are common among pregnant women due to a placenta-created hormone known as the human chorionic gonadotrophin, or HCG. If you experience this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That drowsiness, being tired all the time, sleepy, irritable, not to mention the nausea and the vomiting. Well, we have this hormone to thank for. Morning sickness is not a walk in the park for some patients. I've seen that with my patients, eating something salty in the morning can help with this condition. If you've experienced this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Usually by the second trimester, you should be over it. However, if you can't stop vomiting, this could prevent you and your baby from receiving proper nutrition. Too much vomiting can also disrupt your electrolyte balance and cause dehydration, fainting, muscle cramps, 
and weight loss. You'll need to treat it differently depending on the severity. If you can't eat or drink, I recommend you call your doctor because you can easily get dehydrated and it puts your baby's life in danger. There is a condition, it's not so frequent, it affects almost 2%, it's called hyperemesis gravidima. It's called hyperemesis gravidorum. In this situation, the patient has frequent, persistent and severe vomiting and nausea. It could require multiple hospital stays to prevent and help you recover in received intravenous fluids. Swelling in your face and hands that doesn't resolve when you rest could indicate preeclampsia or high blood pressure problems. The swelling in your legs that happens gradually during the day or thickened ankles is due to venous insufficiency. I know, complicated name, let me explain. As your baby grows, the increasing weight pushes down and places pressure on the veins in your upper legs and lower abdomen. The pressure forces blood to stay in the leg veins rather than flowing upwards. If either of these two situations occur, make sure to make an appointment with your doctor and control your blood pressure. If the swelling is affecting only one side of your body and you notice that it happened all of a sudden, it could be a sign of a blood clot forming in the vein of your legs. So it's best to head to the ER. During pregnancy, the proteins that trigger blood clotting increase. Now, while this is very important to regulate the risk of blood loss during delivery, the extra clotting factors increase your risk of developing venous thromboembolism. Again, big word, simple explanation. It's a circulating blood clot that gets stuck and causes an obstruction. Thankfully, blurry vision during pregnancy is a temporary condition although a slightly annoying one. The hormones that are present during your pregnancy allow your tissues to retain more fluid, which causes your lens and cornea, that means the outer layer of your eye, to thicken. The rise in estrogen also causes your eyes to be drier because your body produces fewer tears. This can leave your eyes feeling irritated and looking red. Remember that changes in your vision, seeing bright lights or blurriness, can also be a sign of high blood pressure and gestational diabetes. My recommendation is that if these symptoms are isolated, you should check your blood pressure. And if it's normal, you can wait for your next appointment to share. However, if these symptoms don't go away or if your blood pressure is elevated, talk to your doctor immediately. It could indicate a problem that has to be treated in the ER. Headaches are also common in the early stages of pregnancy, especially if you had a history of migraines or tension headaches. This is worth mentioning to your doctor for two reasons. One, because it's associated with hypertension and preeclampsia. And another is because the medication that you receive during your pregnancy is limited and not the same as the ones you might have taken before. One of the most exciting moments during your pregnancy is feeling your baby's first movements. It usually happens around 18 to 20 weeks. As the baby grows, you'll start to notice patterns in your baby's kicking and rolling. Most of my patients feel their baby's kicks more during the night than during the day. If you notice that the movement has slowed or stopped, try eating something sweet. This usually gets them going. Another way to check is to lie down and count at least 10 movements in two hours. If you don't feel this much activity, I always recommend using a feel monitor to hear your baby's heartbeat. If you don't have one, be sure to call your doctor or go to the ER for monitoring. Ongoing itching. Itching is a symptom that I get a lot from my patients. It's usually benign, caused by something simple such as a yeast infection or a urinary tract infection. But in these two cases, it's located in the vaginal area. However, if you feel severe itching on your hands and the soles of your feet without any sign of rash, it could indicate a liver condition known as ICP, intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. It's a condition in which the bile stays locked in the liver and the components are deposited in the skin. This happens because of an increased amount of hormones during the pregnancy. It's more common in the third trimester when the hormones are at their highest peak. This situation can lead to a preterm delivery, so let your physician know. So we've pretty much covered everything so far. Remember, always trust your instincts. And I say this as a professional. It's always better to have a patient that contacts us with concerns than to have to deal with a life-threatening situation later on. I hope you find this information useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below.